Okay, uh, welcome to uh, the third example of uh, live test. And uh, this is uh, uh, for showing uh, some of the new features in the PROC live test. Uh, namely, how do we um, compare survival functions across uh, different subgroups uh, when adjusting for multiple comparison. Okay. And how do we compute um, confidence band for the survival curve? Okay. Um, so here, uh, first let's just take a brief look at the data set we're working on. So it is uh, uh, there's uh, three uh, groups: ALL, uh, AML low risk, and AML high risk. And we format it uh, as the risk to be one, two, three. Okay. And we're reading the data set BMT, uh, input group uh, T, the survival time uh, status is the censoring variable. Okay. And this add add is uh, once you're reading three values, you start a new line. Uh, we format the group uh, as the risk uh, because we defined the, the format risk. And we label uh, the T is the disease free time. Okay. So T is time to disease. Okay. Uh, data line, so we're in uh, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, uh, 1, 2, 3. So like that. Okay, so we're reading this, uh, this data set. Okay. Uh, and then we uh, do a complement Meyer curve analysis with uh, something called the uh, SIDAC multiple comparison adjustment. Okay. Uh, if you have learned ANOVA, you know the issue of multiple comparisons. So it happens when we have multiple groups and we want to uh, find out exactly which two groups are different. And we can do pairwise comparison but then the numbers of comparisons increases, then the type 1 error rate uh, inflates. Okay. So it's very likely we are going to get type 1 error. So multiple comparison is really adjusting the ARF levels or the p-values we got for, by doing multiple tests. And there are different uh, uh, methods for the adjustment. Uh, and the SIDAC is one of the multiple comparison adjustment uh, and it's implemented in the PROC live test. If you're really interested in uh, multiple comparison, uh, then you should uh, read some tutorials on uh, multiple comparison and read the SAS documentation of PROC live test for the SIDAC method. Okay. So if you look at the SAS code here, uh, you can see, uh, we again, we use the ODS graphics and uh, we request survival uh, plot, the survival curve, and uh, we uh, define the at-risk uh, time from 0 to 2,500 and the, by increment of 500. Okay. Uh, then we use this uh, time by status 0, so 0 is censored. And then we use the strata uh, statement uh, stratified by group and we use the log rank test. Remember there are two tests, log rank and wall coxon. So we use the log rank test and then this is how we implement the multiple comparison at just equal to SIDAC. Okay. And the multiple comparison adjustment is really important when you have uh, multiple groups. Uh, here we only have three but if you have five or six then you really uh, want to do this. Okay. So now uh, we run the SAS code and uh, so this will give us uh, three stratum uh, as usual uh, give us the uh, probability uh, product limit estimate in the uh, three stratum, the so three groups okay and uh, then we have the censoring uh, seems uh, stratum three, uh, the low risk, which have a lot of uh, sensor cases. Okay, and stratum homogeneity, we get the uh, 
log rank test result. And you can see the uh, multiple uh, comparison table here. We have raw p-value and we have SIDAC p-value. In general, the SIDAC p-values, uh, they are adjusted for multiple comparison, are usually larger uh, than the uh, raw p-values. This means uh, after multiple comparison adjustment, uh, it makes it more difficult uh, to reject the null hypothesis. That's how we control the type 1 error. Okay. The type 1 error is really, uh, we have higher probability to commit a type 1 error. Okay. So, um, but you can see even after adjustment for multiple comparison, there's still a statistically significant difference uh, between um, AML high risk versus AML low risk. Okay, but uh, the comparison between ALL and AML low risk uh, now become marginally significant. It used to be 0.02, but now it's 0.06. All right, and uh, we asked for the survival um, survival uh, curve to be plotted for three groups, and here. Uh, if you look at the x-axis, we have 0, 500, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500. This is what uh, uh, the at-risk option uh, did, okay? Yeah, this is the survival plot. All right, and uh, the second um, is we want to, uh, sometimes um, we say we really want to pick uh, a subgroup, you know, uh, it's sort of like uh, in logistic regression, we want to choose one level as the reference level. So here we can do that um, in PROC left test to specify a group to be the reference group. So here we use the AM low risk and we just need to add uh, the option for strata statement difference diff equal to control parenthesis uh, uh, AM low risk. Okay, so if we run that, we can get uh, the um, um, <coughs> result here. And uh, so now the table for multiple adjustment for multiple comparison become shorter because it only shows ALL versus AML low risk and AM high risk compared to AM low risk. And, and you can see since uh, we, I think we did only two tests here. So uh, the p-value actually become more significant. Yeah. Okay, and uh, then uh, the third demonstration is really we can produce uh, the so-called confidence band for the survival function estimates. So if you think uh, uh, the survival function estimates a estimate of the survival curve, uh, but it, for estimate the curve, we have uncertainty. So it, for each point, we can have a confidence interval, 95%. So we can, we can create a confidence uh, band for the curve point by point. It's called a point-wise confidence band. Uh, but we can also create a simultaneous confidence band, like for all the points together. And that's called HW. Uh, which is the, um, let me see, um, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a developed by Klein and Mossberg. It's called uh, the Hall Wellner uh, HW and uh, equal precision competence band for survivor function. Uh, these are called the simultaneous confidence intervals. So they are they uh, they are not point wise, point by point. It's a whole for the whole curve. Okay. Um, and uh, in our case, uh, if you put everything together for three groups, uh, then the graphs may overlap with cluster and not easy to see. So that's why we add um, we add a um, strata equal to panel uh, that that will give 
one competence band for each uh, subgroup. Okay, so here let's um, run this chunk of code. And uh, so here's the results for three groups and uh, strata homogeneity and survival curve. So this is the thing we're looking at. Uh, that this is uh, because we specified the panel, so it uh, does one competence band for each subgroup. Okay, for the ALL, AML high risk, and uh, the AML low risk. Okay, and this is the uh, it labels 95% uh, confidence limit. That's the point wise, uh, but then you also got uh, the shaded area. That is the Hall Wellner uh, confidence band. You can see because it's uh, the overall confidence band, so it's wider than the point-wise confidence limit. Okay, uh, thank you.